All right, later this evening, Republicans in Iowa will gather throughout the state to participate in the Iowa Presidential Caucuses, the first in the nation uh, primary that kicks off the 2024 presidential election season. Now, freezing temperatures could be the story for the evening as uh, areas across the state expect to experience below zero temperatures with wind chills as low as uh, negative 45 degrees. What else should we be looking for from tonight's caucuses besides freezing people? Well, joining me now from Des Moines to uh, discuss is Chad Conley, founder of Faith Winds. Chad, welcome back to Washington Watch. Hey, Tony, how you doing, sir? Yeah, cold is the word, brother. Cold, brutal cold is the word. So, so how come you're not out on the street doing this as a live stand-up in front of one of the caucus locations? Well, I've actually been out today already. Uh, my wife and I flew here from Arizona Friday. It hasn't been above zero. In fact, we got up and spoke at a church yesterday. The air temperature was minus 19. The wind chill was minus 41. From a South Carolina boy, we don't live with that. So it is absolutely going to play tonight, Tony. Uh, I would think that anyone who's concerned about uh, their steps, uh, walking, any, anybody who's infirm at all, I, I can't see a lot of those people coming out. The, the snow is packed. The roads, the main roads are fine. The side roads are real, real slippery. In fact, the intersections are pretty slippery. So anybody who's a little bit uncertain about their step or their driving, I think they're going to be reluctant to come out. And I think that will be the story. So um, explain for our viewers and our listeners how the caucuses work there in Iowa. Yeah, it's a fascinating thing. I, this is my second time being here. I came as chairman for the South Carolina Party when, in 2012, and uh, my wife and I are going to go to one of the caucus sites tonight, actually hosted by one of our pastor buddies here. But you basically basically get in a room with your neighbors. Uh, you would think of it maybe from a lot of way that a lot of people vote as a precinct, but it's a little bit different because it's your neighbor standing up to caucus for or advocate for uh, the candidate of their choice. So if they want to support Vivek Ramaswamy or Donald Trump or Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis or whatever, Asa Hutchinson, they're going to stand up and explain to you, and they've got a time limit. I think it's three minutes where they get to advocate for the, the candidate of their choice. And then people vote. They gather into segments in a room and they vote and they caucus for that person. And the top three vote getters uh, are reported and they move on from that point. It's really kind of a, an interesting deal. It's different for most people. Uh, we have found we've been getting churches involved for the last year. And most of the churches we've dealt with, Tony, have never done this before. So this past five or six days, we've held five or uh, six church caucus trainings, not to promote any one candidate, but to just get Christians to be out and be involved in the process. Yeah, I was uh, up in Iowa back in 2016 when I uh, was actually uh, campaigning for uh, Ted Cruz. Um, so I went to a, a few of the, the, the places up there. It's, it's a very, it's, I mean, fundamental grassroots. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's really kind of testing. It, it puts the campaigns through the real test of voter turnout, a lot of effort is spent there by the campaigns on Iowa for this one event. You're so right. And you know what I love about it? And of course, I've been an advocate for the early states. And I know you have too, the carve out states, because Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina are, are very different. Let's face it, an uphill or an underdog candidate wouldn't stand a chance in a high dollar state, a California, an Illinois, a Massachusetts, New York. But in a rural state, they've got to get out and prove their mettle. They got to go shake hands. They meet people at the barbecue hut at the right place. We were at the machine shed. I know you're familiar with the machine shed where people had events today uh, over in West Des Moines. So it makes them, you know, refine their message. They're, they got to get good at retail politics and they got to sell their message to the people. And I got to tell you, the folks in these early states have a high regard and a high expectation. Boy, I'm going to meet that candidate, Tony Perkins. And here's what I love about it, Tony. Now don't start any rumors now, okay? <laughs> That's right. Biblical values are premier here in especially South Carolina. And one reason I've been pushing pastors to get involved, and, and much to the chagrin of the consultants, I might add, we're going to make sure the candidates deal with issues that you and I and your listeners on Watching and Watch mm -hmm. care about, know that are foundational. And Tony, you and I have talked about this. It's why I've not told pastors you can't endorse, but I've said, hey, look, look here. If you pick 
the wrong one, how do you have influence? My goal is to have influence and input with whoever wins at any level. But if you do pick somebody and they don't win, how do you have influence? Also, right. make sure you want to stand up and support somebody. As a Christian, I can support ideas and issues all day long, personalities, people, parties. That's a little more difficult. So in the caucus oh. process, the, the way they have the ability to, and this is this is actually Frankly, it's it, it, it the, the principles apply to town hall meetings and other things as well. When you have those intimate gatherings and you can ask questions, you put the the candidates on the record on those issues. You put the elected officials on the record. Amen. Uh, I think our teams have now done 81 or 82 meetings with nine different presidential candidates in the early four states. And that's exactly been our goal here. And you know what else I, I love about the caucus uh, part of this, Tony, is they actually talk about platform and party planks that I know you've been heavily involved. You've invested your life and your career into making sure we've got a solid conservative platform every time out. And so people in the neighborhoods get to discuss the issues that are included in the planks and the party platforms here in Iowa, because I, I just think that's so important that people feel like they're a part of the mix. Yeah, and, and Iowa has long had that shaping influence. And I, and I want to talk a little bit about how the candidates are responding to that grassroots conservative voice, because it's it, while it culminates tonight, this is the zenith, the caucuses. They've been crisscrossing this state now for 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 months, uh, trying to build up their networks and gain support in the state. You know, it's been fun to watch. Um, we've invited every candidate, Republican and Democrat. Uh, frankly, some have not accepted our invitations. I've had pastors in multiple states inviting them, but most of them respond really well. I, I got to tell you, and, and you and I will talk about this later too, the consultants aren't as happy that they respond well, but for the most yeah. part, candidates embrace these events. Yeah. They love to prayed over. They don't mind getting asked difficult questions. They love the interaction. And I just tell them we're going to have a private meeting. It's not secret, but there's no media. Right. We're going to hand pick. We're going to ask you hard questions. It's, I love to watch him respond. It's the authenticity. I mean, that's yes. what people want, the real. So let's talk a little bit about um, how the campaigns have been messaging and, and the momentum going into uh, tonight's caucuses. What, what do you say? Yeah. You know, there's no question. The biggest difference I see, Tony, is President Trump did not take the caucus for granted. Um, I know earlier in the year, there were a lot of assumptions made by his campaign, it looked like to me. We did do a pastor meeting with the president, but he has matched, and maybe even some people's opinion has exceeded DeSantis's ground game. The DeSantis team put together an amazing ground game here. I think he's done what's called the full Grassley twice. That's going to all 99 counties twice. I know Vivek Ramaswamy did that, and I'm pretty sure the DeSantis campaign did. Uh, Ramaswamy's been everywhere. He has been all over the place. Uh, I spoke to his campaign a couple of days ago, and he was doing eight to 10 events a day. The DeSantis campaign has a very good ground game all over the state, and, and Trump came in in the last two and a half to three months and put together a ground game of, uh, of caucus captains and representatives and surrogates. And so this is going to be interesting. Uh, we didn't see much Nikki Haley ground game out here. Now, she has gotten momentum. There's no question that the uh, AFP group, the Super PAC, spent tens of millions of dollars on Nikki Haley's behalf out here. They have a ground game, um, but I have not seen that Nikki had a campaign team here very much. And of course, she was my governor when I was chairman, so she and I go way back. Th this is going to be interesting. I would have predict predicted, hey, Trump's going to win. Uh, just there's a lot of momentum. His, as you know, fiercely loyal people. Mm -hmm. uh, DeSantis's people and Ramaswamy's people look to be a younger crowd. You know, you got to think when it's minus 10 outside with a minus 30 wind chill by 7 p.m. tonight, uh, that, that's going to play. Uh, if there's an older crowd or an infirm crowd that's trying to get out to the caucuses, I don't think that can be ignored. So I do think this is probably a, a Trump and I think he may get close to 45 to 50 if I had to predict it. So, so the real the real battle is who's going to be second. I think so. 
I think so. And it, I, if I had to guess, just and this is within our churches, within pastors and Christians I've talked to, I think DeSantis has won over an awful lot of them. Well, I, I mean, what other options are that? I mean, you, you, when you look at Nikki Haley's basically refused to talk about those I- issues. And and uh, Vivek is, I mean, a great guy, and I think he's got a lot of energy, but not not a lot of substance on those issues that the the, the Bible believing, faith committed voters, what we would call the sage cons, um, n- not a lot there for them. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, Vivek has not been hesitant to meet with pastors. He's embraced taking the questions. But you're right, uh, without a biblical worldview, he's not as familiar with a lot of the terminology and the things and the basis of the thinking. Uh, Governor DeSantis has jumped in wholeheartedly, full feet first. And President Trump, I was at his part of his meeting. He didn't hesitate to answer. I think that most people see it, though, and Tony, you probably agree with this. President Trump's already running a general election campaign. Yeah. He's not really talking to the primary voters to stay on those issues. You know what's interesting that I think your people need to hear? Um, I went to church yesterday, spoke at a church in Des Moines. There were three media people there. The media paints us as a broad brush, monolithic. They always want to put us into the life and traditional marriage box. And I told them that uh, Christians aren't a monolith. We care about the rising prices and inflation in the southern border, in the Middle East, turmoil, all things that we think there's a real loss of leadership in the in the White House and administration on. And they keep going back to hammering, trying to put Christians into a box of the issues they think they understand. And you and I know most of the media can't identify our church in pictures. And they really don't have a biblical worldview. But I know I gave the gospel to my best ability, and so did the the pastor yesterday when I wrapped up. So they heard it, but they 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 sent me an article from one of them just recently, and it wasn't very favorable. Yeah, by you know, it, it's funny you say they they couldn't identify a church. You know how you get those? Uh, I'm not a robot. You know, s- select the three squares that have a church in it. They wouldn't be able to uh, to, to to do that. Uh, the you're, you're absolutely right. There's there is a hierarchy uh, when it comes to worldview, biblical worldview voters. I mean, obviously, life is at the top. You know, you know various issues. There's a ranking, but we care about all these issues because we live in the same country as everybody else, and we, you know, our paychecks being hit by Bidenomics, just like everybody else. We're having to fill up our car, so those issues matter. They really matter. And, you know, I talk to pastors and churches, all of my my view now, and especially out here in Iowa, I've been talking to all these people in churches for these past few months. And so my, my thinking about it, what, what we see the media, what we see the candidates, I've been actually asking hundreds of caucus goers, what do you think about this? So when I give you that media take or even the take on the the caucus itself, these are feedback ideas and inputs from people who are sitting in churches who are telling me what they're hearing and what they're thinking. But that's what I love about the caucus and the early states in particular. They got to go campaign. They got to communicate what they believe in. And I, I think it's going to be a close one tonight, but I do think the weather is going to play the biggest role yeah. that actually comes out. That, that's a good surprise. Well, stay warm and uh, be careful when you walk down the sidewalk. You know I will, brother. God bless you, and thanks for all you do, Tony. All right, Chad, great to see you.